Go. Yep, we're live. Yeehaw. Do it. All right. Well, this is the first song on our new record, which is being released today. Which is what day? Groundhog's Day. Yeah. And then we'll release it again tomorrow. The day after. <laughs> the day after. This first song is called the title song on the album. It's called Turban Streetman Sugar Ride Blues. And it goes like this. sequence the record when it came to like playing it in order live. <laughs> it means like guitar tuning and changes and shit like that. But that's okay. We got this one. This song is about a perverted rock and roll fantasy uh, related to the uh, Fort Worth Rock Assembly where you apply to be another band for a show. And uh, a couple of years ago we applied to play a show with Flipper. And uh, they didn't reject us, they simply didn't respond to us. And that's, I guess, better than rejection? I don't know. Uh, but the uh, other thing that we really wanted to see was this little Fort Worth, uh, or formerly Fort Worth indie pop band, and 
Just coincidentally, they released their new album on the 25th of this past month. The band is called The Crystal Furs. And what I really wanted was to hear The Crystal Furs play a set of songs of the late, great Motorhead. And since uh, the Fort Worth Rock Assembly wasn't down with that either, we wrote a song. It's called The Crystal Furs, Sing the Best of Motorhead. It goes like this. <laughs>
Thank you very much, man. This next song is a true story about identity theft. I ask this question a lot. Have you ever had your identity stolen? All right. Uh, we have to ask the other question, too. Anybody here ever stolen somebody else's identity? No. <laughs> yeah. That really was going to be my guess, too. If I had to, like, pick somebody who's done that. Well, uh, I hope you bought, like, cool shit off the internet with your stolen identity. Uh, the two guys in this song, however, stole the identities of two other guys not to buy cool stuff on somebody else's credit card, uh, but for the far more noble purpose of getting laid. The song is called Cantaloupe Tonight, and it goes like this.
plan your bathroom break or whatever accordingly because the needle's going to hit the end in about four minutes. You're going to have to lift it up and flip things over. This song is about a transvestite with alien abduction envy. And wherever Wade is, we're playing this song for him tonight. It goes out to Wade here at Division Brewing and Growl and anybody else who ever wishes that they could be abducted by aliens to get the hell out of this crazy ass place. Yeah, y'all too. Talk to Wade, when the aliens come, he's probably gonna have a guest list and you're gonna wanna be on it. Yeah, the song is called Black Massachusetts. It goes like this. Mr. B, 
on the drum kit, beating on shit rhythmically for his room, his board, and his college tuition since April of 2016. He is the barometer, the canary in the economic coal mine that tells you that no matter what you hear on the news, the economy still sucks. And he's 24 years old and he's living at home and he's drumming in a punk rock band with his mom and his dad. And there is no better economic indicator than that gentleman right back there. Alright, so you guys got the record clip now? You ready to drop the needle on side B? Okay, this next song is about another, it's another song about another woman. Oddly enough, music is full of songs about women. Um, this one, uh, you may know her too. She is overworked, and she is underpaid, and she is criminally underappreciated. The song is called Bilingual Substitute Teacher, and it goes out to that lady wherever the hell she might be tonight. She might be one of you. You ready, Mr. B? Yeah.
actually, she's octolingual, but it didn't quite fit the meter. And it also sort of proves our point about underappreciating this lady. Speaking of appreciating, we'd like to uh, give a shout out to Mr. Nick Brown for the uh, video images that we're watching here tonight. Uh, he put them all together for us. So we feel like we're at home, in our home away from home here at Growl, but this time a trip with vintage wallpaper and a television set. All the creature comforts. Yes. All right, man, this next song is one that we hope to make big bank on in about six years. The next time the sky turns mysteriously black for people who don't believe in science. We're going to take the astronomical earworm, or no, Best in show, away from Bonnie Tyler, and uh, that uh, terrible eclipse of the heart song thing that she's got out there. So uh, this particular song is one we want to put in your ear now. We hope you'll be singing it for years to come, and uh, it's called Little Miss Solar Eclipse. It goes like this. <laughs> Gracefully, and as a tip of the hat to Marky e. Smith, and we played it for the very first time last year 
on January 20th over at the Main and South Side. And like no shit, four days later, Marky e. Smith died. And uh, there are some people who are trying to make a uh, causation correlation between the timing of this particular song and the passing of Mr. Smith. And the person who is the biggest um, backer of this particular conspiracy theory has been put on notice that we are working on a song called The Ballad of Aaron Bartz. And uh, we might play that song at some point. He continues to give us grief over this particular song. At any rate, to the late, great Mark E. Smith, growing old, disgracefully, hip priests, hip replacement. Cloudland. Woo! 
And a very, very big thank you to the entire Dreamy Life family for adopting us strays from Richardson into the club four years ago, something like that, yeah. when we uh, released our first record, Chinese Folk Songs. And uh, we felt like, uh, not even like stepchildren in the family, we felt like sort of children who grew up and moved away, but we still get together at the holidays and shit. So uh, we really appreciate that. Appreciate all of your support. Um, we've got uh, merch for sale right there behind Peter. You can see Rose. She's got uh, the credit card swipe reader and all that stuff if you haven't picked up anything. And please be sure to pick up something from Jean Caffeine. She is a fucking national treasure. And she's here with us tonight. I'd like to thank Mr. Nathan Mongo Wells for getting things started. And of course our best buds in War Party for coming in here and moving the night along quite delightfully. We got two more songs left on the record if you're listening at home. And to be honest, we really thought about just playing the record and lip syncing the whole thing as part of our this release show. Um, maybe next one. This next song is a true story about some weird shit that happened to us in New Orleans. Some of you heard this story before and some of you might not. About a year ago, we played a show at the Bank Street Bar on Bank Street in New Orleans. And uh, the uh, opening band was a little three-piece folk outfit called Jerk Unicorn. And uh, the front guy, his name was Seth, and he was a big, tall guy, and he had kind of a red hair, short mohawk, and a beard. And uh, that night, he was wearing this lovely navy blue sort of mid calf length dress with a white Puritan collar right out of the Hillary Clinton fall fashion collection. <laughs> And army boots too, man. He was—he looked really sharp. He was playing a 12-string acoustic guitar through two fuzz pedals into a solid-state Fender amplifier with the treble completely jacked. And uh, and they had two drummers. And uh, they played these three lovely little songs about love and drugs. And uh, after the third song, this guy gets up from the end of the bar and he starts walking up toward the stage, mumbling shit. And he gets up to the front. And we can finally sort of hear what he's saying. He's like. I'm the owner of this bar, and your music makes me want to commit suicide. And he reached up, and he flipped the switch, and all the neon lights behind the stage went dark, and the buzzing of that Fender amplifier with the two fuzz pedals and the shit just went dead silent. And the Seth, the front jerk unicorn guy, to his credit, was very polite. He apologized. And the owner's like, you're done, you're done, you're done. So they started tearing stuff off the stage, and we started putting our stuff up, not sure whether we were actually going to get the play or not. And in the meantime, the bar owner parks himself on a couch about where those two black stools are and starts playing happy hands with some filthy thing that uh, had walked into the bar. And, uh, sorry, that sounded really sexy, didn't it? Um, it was really a traumatic experience, and I'm going to play that card if I have to. Um, this is like being broadcast to the world now. Um, at any rate, by the time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what, what was it that you that you were talking about? I don't remember either, but it might have been illegal. <laughs> um, at any rate, um, I got you. You got, I got you. Me? Sweet, thank you so much. Uh, at any rate, by the time we were set up, uh, Richard, the bar owner, and his uh, his friend had left the bar for whatever else they were going to do. So we played our set, and then the final band played, and we got in the van, and we drove north, about an hour up north to Hammond, Louisiana. We were on our way to Memphis, so we were like, getting a head start and shit. And by the time we get back to the motel, I pulled out my phone and looked at Facebook, and there were like 15 threads going about what happened at the Bank Street Bar tonight. <laughs> what happened to Jerk Unicorn? And someone suggested... Uh, that maybe Seth and his two drummer friends had been caught jerking a unicorn. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, we're pretty traumatized by the whole thing. And so uh, we wrote this song because New Orleans is a really great fucking place. Yeah. It's like Las Vegas, but it's closer. And <laughs> Las Vegas has this social contract that you enter into right. that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. The Crescent City, no such arrangement. So whatever the hell happens, you are free to talk about it and write a song about it and record that song and play it on the internet and all kinds of shit. So that's what we did. The song is called Jerking a Unicorn. It goes out to Seth and anybody else who had weird shit ever happen to them in New Orleans, like Ray Davies or uh, where's Gene? Gene's one-time roommate, Alex Chilton. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> 
about a year ago, I got a text from somebody I didn't know asking if we would be willing to uh, collaborate with him on a single for a project he was doing. Uh, and it's uh, 12 weeks, 12 songs, all collaborations with other DFW uh, area folks. And uh, he sent us the demo for this tune and we really dug it. And uh, he came over to our house one Saturday morning and we ran through it a couple of times. We hit the record button and ran through it a couple of more times and then he released it. And uh, we don't get a chance to play with it very often. It's a really groovy song, and so uh, we're happy to back Mr. Nathan Mongo Wells on this song called Apathy. 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 Fuck yeah. All right. Let's get this. Uh... Hey, I feel really privileged to play with these guys. Uh, yeah. Happy release day, guys. Yeah. It's a great record. All right.
Smith and Mongo Wells. All right, we have one last song for you, and this is by special request. That's the one, man. That is the one. And y'all know the drill, right? If you haven't already signed the petition, change.org, Panda, Gaga, some lucky petitioner is going to be the one that puts this over the top and catches the eye of Lady Gaga's management team. I'm kind of thinking that we gotta wait for the Star is Born thing to kind of die down and she starts looking for like the next best uh, ride in town, which we all know is gonna be black and white. So, to Lady Gaga, to my retirement, to my spirit animal, Goo Goo, Panda Attack, five-year-olds dig it, you can too. Sharpie, Bathlight, 
and Luna Moon. So uh, Arlington, we'll see you again soon. Y'all have a good night. Be safe.